So wingsuit flying takes years and years of preparation uh, and then to get to this level where we're wingsuit base jumping in competition and competition with you know, 16 of the best pilots in the world, it, it really does take a long time to gain the experience, to gain the right uh, level of uh, ability to be able to execute upon what we're doing. Uh, it's an air sport. It takes lots of years to get experience and make sure you get to a competence level where you're comfortable and you understand your limits and you understand the environmental limits on you as well. We're doing these things not to try to push the limits and die, but we're trying to do these things to push the limits and, and live. Thanks for having me in China. You start skydiving, you get 200 skydives. Then you put on a small wingsuit, you know, and you get instructed fly that wingsuit, then you can slowly start adding more fabric, faster suits, more technology into it, get experienced at that, takes hundreds and hundreds of jumps, maybe thousands of jumps, then take that into the base environment, right? So you now you've built off your experience as a beginner, you've got more and more experience as a skydiver, and more and more experience as a wingsuit pilot, then you've got to learn how to base jump. Learn how to base jump, go through all those levels, and now you have the WWL. So it takes a fair amount of conditioning to be able to go do the jumps and then you add competition on top of it and it is very training heavy sport. Even once you're there, and once you're training, and once you've, you've already done it, it's super important to stay on top of it and to keep your body physically fit. You know, parachute openings are pretty rough on the body, so, you know, I try to keep myself as limber as possible, try to do a little bit of yoga. And it's like any other sport. You can't just rock up and jump off a cliff and fly in a straight line. You can't do that, you won't, you won't succeed, you may not survive. So it takes, a, it takes years of preparation, but then it takes very specific training uh, in the wingsuit, and then it takes specific race training to be able to execute upon this sport well. It's like driving around a Formula One racetrack. I mean, you don't give it 100% the first time. You drive around, you do a quick inspection, and then as the race progresses, you use your skill and your technique to improve your time, or improve your position in each lap? Well, because it's all flying your body, even though we have these suits, I mean, inside the suits, we're, we're flying our bodies. We're flying in, you know, these inflated cells, but it's our body that's making the motions. It's our body that's forming this wing. Good base jumper definitely is the one who has a bigger number of skydives because we are sport of accumulation, you know? Every single jump, every single free fall time actually accumulating in your brain and your muscle memory and you're simply becoming better. I spent the last few days while we had some bad weather doing some research, mapping out all the glide slopes and the minimum trajectories for all the different known courses, plus all the known common training locations so that I can correlate which tracks best suit which training locations and then choose which suit best suits those training locations and racetracks. Like, you know, a marathon runner doesn't go and just run a marathon. He plans and prepares and trains for maybe years before they go and do that. Um, so it's like any other Olympic sport. It's just as technical, it's just as hard, and the technology is all there that we're changing all the time to keep up with the athlete's abilities. You know, you, you have to take the time, you have to you have to put in the time and you have to train really hard in order to, uh, to make this dream come true. So I think more very solid skilled pilots will go try to qualify for World Winter League in the next couple of years. And it will be way harder to bring home the victory from China.